hello welcome back to my channel guys I finally did it I finally filmed the entire bookshelf tour plus the other one <laughs> so this is going to be every single book and little curio and everything that I have on these shelves so the only thing is I slightly tailored my Sarah J Moss books to not be so intense in terms of going through everything. I have a much more in-depth video which I can link in the comments and up above for you guys to watch if you would like to that goes into like complete depth of every Sarah J Moss book that I own. So everything else though is on these shelves and I'm excited to show you guys. So sit back, relax, and let's get started. All right, so we're going to bring down the first middle shelf because I don't have a tripod tall enough to <laughs> accurately reach it. I'm just going to bring it down to the middle shelf. So my first shelf has a Baby Groot Funko Pop that I've had for many years. He's one of the bobblehead ones, which I love. Next to him, we have one of my newer additions, which is Wanda from, and this should be in-game Wanda or Infinity Wars. I can't remember which one. And I'm pretty sure she glows in the dark. After that, we have one of the book pots from Illumicrate. And this one is the Book of the Dead. And I just have some bookmarks in it. Miscellaneous bookmarks. On top, we have some of the secret books from Fairy Loot, which all open up. And I generally just keep, um, well, that's a very spicy print. <laughs> I just keep some of the uh, little tarot cards that we get every month from Fairy Loot. Here's this particular volume. And then the last one is a very large book tin. And this one is from the Illumicrate Daughter of Smoke and Bone. And it is art by Rosie Thorns. On the second shelf, we have all of my Avatar comics, which I think it would take a while for me to get all those out, so I'm really not going to do that, but I keep most of my Avatar Funko Pops on this middle shelf, so all of basically Series 1 and some of Series 2 are on this particular shelf, and this is the comic collection that I have thus far, and I have read all of them. All right, so in the middle shelf, we have my Julie Kagawa collection, mostly of the Iron Fae series. I have read a lot of her books and I really enjoyed them. They were one of my like OG favorites from high school. I will say like the Iron Fae series holds such a special place in my heart because it truly was one of the first YA series I was into back in the day. So if you haven't read it, I really do recommend it. It's really great. First up, we have this little Funko Pop of Zuko, Prince Zuko, which he actually has the lightning on his hand. And I believe this might be like the Agni Kai version of him. So he's first up. Then we have a little Spirit World Aang, who is kind of a clear Funko Pop. And he's holding his staff because he's in the Spirit World. Then we have the Iron Fae Book 10 from Fae Crate, which I love the art on this. I just have a couple of things in it that were from that particular book hangover box. And here is the back. So we have the Iron King, which is the Iron Fae book one. This one is the Fairy Loot edition of that. This one is just a, um, I think this came from Fae Crate. It might be signed, but it was what I got in that box. It was just kind of like a special edition version of it. Up next, we have the Fairy Loot Iron Daughter with some really pretty sprayed edges. We have the Iron Queen. Again, these are all from Fairy Loot more than likely sold out at this point. The Iron Knight. And this is from the new series, which Fairy Root Loot is continuing to do them, which is the Iron Raven. I have not read it yet, but there are those edges. And down below that, we have all of my original OG paperbacks of all four of the original books. So these are just special to me because I've had them for forever. You can even see like, I got them at a used bookstore way back when. <laughs> so you can see how long I have had these in my collection. Truly one of like the most OG things that I have. Up next, we have our Lee Bardugo shelf. So first of all, we have this little globe that I'm pretty sure came from Fake Crate with all the different countries and places that 
are in this particular world. Up next, we have our little chess pieces of Inej and Kaz right behind her. These came from Shelf Crate Love, and that store is way out of business at this point. <laughs> but I just think they're so cute. I think the art is actually by Silk Tara. I'm, I'm pretty sure, but I find them really, really cute. And then I also have this candle from Illumicrate Robkin Myths. On the shelf, we have The Language of Thorns, Shadow and Bone, Ruin and Rising, and I do not have the third book, or the second book. Is it Siege and Storm? I don't know if that's second or third. I have a feeling it might be the second. Then I have the collector's edition of Six of Crows, which is this really fun red sprayed edged um, book here. And on the back it says, no mourners, no funerals. Then I have the same edition of Crooked Kingdom. And it has black edges. And then this is the back. Then I have King of Stars, Scars, which this is the Illumicrate version. It's just really pretty. And I love the spine. The monster is me and I am the monster. And then I have the second book in the series of that particular one, King of Scars. And to be honest, what is the, even the name of this book? Uh, Rule of Wolves. <laughs> Sorry, I really, I took the cover off. So I really don't even know. This one says we're all monsters now. And this is also from Illumicrate. And then this one is Night House, which is... Is this the Illumicrate version? I think it is. Um, that is the spine, and I love it because it's like snake skin. It's really a cool edition of this book. And nothing on the edges, just a really cool version of that. And then down below, I have another edition of Crooked Kingdom. This one has red sprayed edges. I have this edition of Six of Crows, which has black edges. And then lastly, I have the Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of King uh, King of Scars. This next shelf has a bit of my anime, I would say. So I have a Aang and Momo Funko Pop, a Legend of Korra, so Korra Funko Pop, which I really like that one, and a big giant Baymax. <laughs> so the books that I actually have on this shelf is a Pokemon Adventures anime um, or manga set. And it's volumes one through seven. I have actually never read any of these, but I picked them up at a used bookstore. I thought it was a really good price. It was like 20 bucks for all of them. So figured why not. And then the other animes that I have on my shelf are just the first, well, sorry, it's backwards. Um, the black edition of Death Note volume one and two from Barnes and Noble. So I'm pretty sure where I picked these up. And I like them because they're all black. Like, they're really cool. So, the last shelf here at the bottom, I'm going to bring up to the anime shelf so I can show you guys. Because it's just way too complicated to get tripods down here. So, I have this um, Bold and the Ruthless candle that goes with the Renegades series. So, I just have that down here with the books. And then I also have this very, very, very old um, Harry Potter um, snow globe. I've had this thing since I was probably in the seventh grade, maybe even younger. I mean, this was from 2001. Uh, I got it probably at Hallmark. Up first, we have Renegades. Next, we have Arch Enemies. And then third, we have Supernova. Then I have a couple of the PC Cast books down here, which this one is Wind Rider, Sun Warrior. I wish she'd finished the series. I've read the first three, and it left on a pretty big cliffhanger, and here we are. Um, and then this is the first one called Moon Chosen. Then we have another YA oldie for me, which is Trial by Fire. And then we have Witch's Pyre. Randomly, I just have a copy of the Ember, An Ember in the Ashes. <laughs> this is my romance shelf. We have The Love Hypothesis, Phoenix Unbound, A Touch of Darkness, It Happened One Summer, which, by the way, is such a great book. If you haven't picked this up, it is top-notch, one of my favorite books of the year, honestly. I have adored it. Tools of Engagement, which I really, really like Tessa Bailey. So if you haven't checked her out, I highly recommend it. She also wrote It Happened One Summer. Changing the Game, which I kind of like these J.C. Burton 
um, little romances. They're usually sport related and I, I think they're really fun. And then one of my favorite authors, uh, T.L. Swan, The Takeover. Also on my romance shelf, we have a lot of PC cast. She writes um, the House of Night series. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Also the um, Wind, Moon Chosen, Sun Warrior, Wind Rider. She writes those with her daughter, but she also has a lot of just romance books. And honestly, they were probably some of the first I ever read. So these are just very special to me because I've had them for forever. They're usually goddess based and some of them have some spins on like Hades and Persephone or Beauty and the Beast. So they're usually somehow mixed in with fairy tales. So Elfame's Choice, Goddess of Troy. These two are particularly my favorites. The first one is called Divine by Mistake. I adore this novel. It is so good. Definitely one of my favorites. I think there's three, but I did not like the third book. So it really wraps up after book two. So if you do read these, don't even bother with book three because it really does wrap up in book two. To me, you just need one and two, which the second book is Divine by Choice. So those are two of my all-time favorite old school romance novels. So if you haven't checked those out, I highly recommend them. Then we have Goddess of the Rose, which these covers are pretty spicy. Warrior Rising, Goddess of Spring, Goddess of Legend, and Goddess of Light. These are just really fun. <laughs> okay, moving on to our first big bookshelf, second shelf. So the bottom shelf is all of my romances, and this is kind of getting into more YA stuff. First of all, we have An Enchantment of Ravens, followed by A Sorcery of Thorns, which I did not like. But this one's a really pretty fairy loot edition, I think. It's either fairy loot or owl crate, maybe. But I have both of them side by side. There is the, I believe this is the Owlcrate edition because it's the purple one and it didn't have any sprayed edges. And Owlcrate normally doesn't spray their edges. They just change the cover. Next up, we have The Shadows Between Us, The Camelot Betrayal, which is the second book. Um, it is, the first book is The Guinevere Deception, followed by the Camelot Betrayal. I did read this and I enjoyed it. I need to read book two. Then we have The Merciful Crow, Six Crimson Cranes. This is a stunning edition. Pretty sure it came in a fairy loot. Purple on top. Girl Serpent Thorn, A Winter's Promise, Bone Crier's Moon, and The Other Side of the Sky. Next we have A Deal with the Elf King, A Dance with the Fae Prince, The Bridge Kingdom, The Traitor Queen, A Curse So Dark and Lonely, and A Heart So Fierce and Broken. Over here we have Incendiary, which is a fairy loot book. I loved this book last year. And we have the sequel, Illusionary, The Beautiful, A Crown of Feathers, and Heart of Flames. Moving on, on this side of the shelf, we have a Winter Soldier Funko Pop from Amazon. He's holding the shield. We have the newest uh, Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Kingdom of the Cursed, which I can't wait to read. We also have the Barnes & Noble edition of Once Upon a Broken Heart, A Kiss of Deception, which I really love. Mary E. Pearson's writing. If you haven't read anything by her, they're great. The Heart of Betrayal, The Beauty of Darkness. Then we have Dance of Thieves and Vow of Thieves. Below these guys, we have Caravel, Legendary, and Finale. On the next shelf, we have another Winter Soldier Funko Pop. This time, this is Falcon and Winter Soldier, and he has the golden black arm. I have some coasters from Fairy Loot, I'm pretty sure, of Serpent and Jove. So we have Lou. I think this is supposed to be Ansel. Reed. Coco. A shelfy figure of Wrath from Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Cursed. And then I also have this little tin that is Serpent and Dove themed. We also have this fun Serpent and Dove themed candle. First up we have the Fairy Loot edition of Serpent and Dove with the bronze shimmer edges. Then we have the Fairy Loot edition of Blood and Honey which has kind of metallic black edges. Up next, we have The Cruel Prince, and these are all the Barnes & Noble editions that came in black. The Wicked King, Queen of Nothing, and this is a owl crate edition of Queen of Nothing, and then How the King of Elfane Learned to Tell Stories. Then we have The Last Nimsara, The Caged Queen, and The Skyweaver. Up top, we have The Prison Healer, which has these fun edges. This stunning edition of Kingdom of the Wicked by Fairy Loot. 
with the really pretty edges. Lore, another fairy loot edition. Up next, we have a really fun duology, which was the Storm Crow and the Crow Rider. I really enjoyed this series. It's a duology, so it's a pretty easy read. And then another series that I have yet to finish, but really do want to finish, Furyborn, Kingsbane, and Lightbringer. Then we have these Hollow Vowels, which I'm currently reading. The Owlcrate edition of The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and another Owlcrate of Where Dreams Descend. Our next shelf is my Lainey Taylor shelf, which I'll have to bring down to show you, but I love this shelf. We have this little vial that has Carew's soul in it from Daughter of Smoke and Bone. That was kind of a little prop piece that we have. I have a Sarai shelfy piece from Shelf Crate Love, which they're out of business, as I mentioned. I also have the same version of Laszlo. I have this little snow globe of the Kingdom of Weep from um, Strange the Dreamer. Two of my all-time favorite books, like most cherished books, is this edition of Strange the Dreamer. It is blue sprayed and it is just absolutely stupidly pretty and it is also signed and I do truly adore that version. And then this is the Muse of Nightmares. So it's a duology, Strange to the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. Highly recommend it if you have not read it. And this one has orange edges. Another edition that I have is just like the plain one but I have this really fun um, special cover that I found from a random site. Can't remember who I got it from. And then that is the back. On the shelf we actually have some bookends and these are from uh, Illumicrate. So this is one side. And then we also have its companion which is the Muse of Nightmares. I just think the art is really pretty. Then we have the Illumicrate editions of Daughter of Smoke and Bone, Days of Blood and Starlight, and Dreams of Gods and Monsters. I also have like, I think it's a little novella and it's called Night of Cake and Puppets. I have never read it, but I own it. <laughs> and then I have the UK edition of Daughter of Smoke and Bone. And originally I got this because I did want these books, but I hated the original US covers. So before Illumicrate announced that they were doing the editions, I was like, oh, well, I'll, I like the UK cover. So, which, I mean, I feel like this is a really cool cover. So I bought the first one. And then once again, I have the Illumicrate um, bookends. Then we also have the Litjoy Crate um, book pot for Miracles for Breakfast, which is the book that's featured in Strange the Dreamer. And then lastly, which I have done a bigger deep dive of these particular, this set from Litjoy Crate. And it is a Strange the Dreamer set. And it is absolutely stupidly stunning. So these were made in collaboration with Lainey Taylor. So there is Strange the Dreamer. And look at these blinding edges. <laughs> they don't even look real. And then there's the back. They have illustrations. They're annotated. They're signed. I mean, they're very tricked out. And then here is Muse of Nightmares same blinding edges. I mean, look at that. It's like blinding. And then the last shelf is my top shelf, so I'll bring that down for you. We have this Miguel Co uh, Funko Pop from Coco, which I love that movie. We have this really giant Oppa flocked version from Funko Pop. Yzma as a cat holding the poison for Cusco. Up first, we have Carry On by Rainbow Rowell, Wayward Son, and Any Way the Wind Blows. I will say, I really enjoyed the first book, did not care for the second book, and have not read the third book yet. So, yet to be determined. Then we have Scythe, Thunderhead, Ash Princess, Lady Smoke, Roar, which if you have not read this series, it is amazing. I loved books one and two. Books three is not out yet, but... It is one of the coolest, most different series that I've ever read. And I love how I'm talking with my hands, but you can't see me. <laughs> but if you take away anything from this, please read Roar and um, Rage, the first two books in the series. Really cool magic system. Really fun characters. Really great book. 
There's Rage, Fable, To Kill a Kingdom, All the Stars and Teeth, and All the Tides of Fate. On this shelf, we have The Beholder, The Boundless, Among the Beast and Briar, House of Salt and Sorrow, The Witch Haven, Defy the Night, Shielded, This Golden Flame, Master of One, Goddess in the Machine, Star Daughter, Spin the Dawn, Winterwood, The Bright and Pale, Forest of Souls, Two Dark Rains, Three Dark Crowns, Sky in the Deep, and A River of Royal Blood. Now, ironically, the only books I've read on the shelf are The Beholder, The Boundless, and Winterwood. So if anyone's read any of these other books, please let me know which ones are great and that I should pick up next. On the next shelf, we have my tribute to Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. So this bookshelf is all about the Illuminae Files and Aurora Rising. First of all, we have this Squad 312 candle and the Aurora Academy. I always display this version because I think it's stunning. So this is, I believe, the Illumicrate version of Aurora Burning. So it's the second book. And I love Cal. <laughs> Who does he remind you of? Rowan. Yes, we love a silver, white-haired, long, fey person. <laughs> so... I think this book is one of my favorites. Behind that we have Aurora Rising and it has purple edges. And then I have the standard copy of Aurora Burning in orange. Over here we have my copies of the Illuminae Files, which these are not their standard covers. These are some that I got from a shop. It's the same shop that did Strange the Dreamer and right now I can't remember who it was. I'll try to look it up. It might have been Fox and Wit, but I'll, I'll put it down below. Then we have Gemina. And Obsidio. If you have not read the Illuminae Files or Aurora Rising, I highly recommend it as they are amazing books. I also have Memento, which was, if you pre-ordered something, I believe you got this. It's um, kind of a prequel to the Illuminae Files. So I have that. Then I have a couple more candles. So this is the Heimdall candle error. Then we have a little Ezra and a little Katie. And then I have this cool book tin that is Illuminae Files relevant. And then behind that is a, um, I'm not gonna grab it out, but it's a canvas that I think Fabled Merch did that is quotes from the Illuminae Files. Down below this, we do have my Harry Potter shelf. I have debated whether or not to go through this shelf because I really, I have very mixed feelings about Harry Potter at this point. I don't agree with J.K. Rowling, so I have not purchased anything related to her in a very long time. These are just things that I've held on to for many years and that I have just collected. Some stuff, I, I mean, I probably bought a few years ago, but at this point, I'm not really adding to the collection. So this is the shelf. I'm not going to go through each book individually. I'm happy to if you want to reach out and I can share with anything. I do love these handmade um, crocheted items. So we have a Dobby and then we also have something from Fantastic Beast. I can't remember. It might be a Demi Guys, um, but they were handmade and I do really love them. So that is my Harry Potter shelf. More kind of just nostalgia for me and something that I loved growing up. I grew up with Harry Potter. So I have this shelf kind of in the middle. This is kind of my adult-ish shelf. Um, I don't really know what else to call it at this point, but we have a lot of V.E. Schwab on here and a lot of Brandon Sanderson. So I do have these little shelfy figures from Aluma Crate that came in the Darker Shade of Magic collection box that they did. Up first, we have the Illumicrate edition of A Darker Shade of Magic. It has very pretty edges, and I should be getting the rest of the series by them soon. Oh, I also have a Korg and a Meek Funko Pop. He is one of my all-time favorite Marvel characters from Ragnarok, um, so I do love him. We have A Darker Shade of Magic, the box set of the Darker Shades of Magic series. So it has all three books, and that's actually how I read it. We have Vicious, Vengeful, The Priory of the Orange Tree, and this is not the orange sprayed edition. In terms of Brandon Sanderson, we have Mistborn, 
The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages. We have Skyward, which I love this series. It's great. And Star Sight. And then down below, we have this big honker, The Way of Kings. Then we have The Poppy War, Truth Witch, Wind Witch, Sight Witch, Blood Witch, and then a random copy of Catwoman by Sarah J. Moss. <laughs> I did not know where to quite put this, so it just lives here. And then we have this lovely Funko Pop of Mando and Grogu because I love the Mandalorian. And then down below, we have the Night Circus. This shelf is a bit miscellaneous at this point, so we have Whisper of the Tide, which is a sequel to The Song of the Current, which I read on audio, and I have never picked up the sequel. Somebody let me know if you did. The Ravenous Dark, These Violent Delights, We Hunt the Flame, Warrior of the Wild, Fire with Fire, The Antidote, Blood Air, The Atlas Six, Crave, Crush. One of my favorite series is The Vampire Academy. So we have the first one, which is The Vampire Academy. Frostbite. Oh, and by the way, these are the terrible original... <laughs> <laughs> covers from forever ago. I've had these books for so long. Shadow Kiss. I feel like they're the epitome of like 2008 YA. Blood Promise, Last Sacrifice, and Spirit Bound. And then below that we have the very bottom shelf which I am going to bring up. Up first we have Nevermore which is such a fun book. These are definitely um, middle grade and I think they are just really fun. So this is a great book if you have not read it. Then we have the sequel to Nevermore, which is Wondersmith. Such a pretty book. And then I have not read the third book yet, but it is Hollow Pox. And this one has really pretty orange edges. Which, let me just show you the inside. The reason I, these are the UK covers. And the reason I wanted them is because, just take a look at this beauty. So this is Nevermore underneath the dust jacket. That is stunning. Here is Wondersmith underneath the dust jacket. Really pretty naked hardback. And then the last one, which is Hollow Pox under the dust jacket, looks like this. It's just so pretty. Like these could sit on your shelf without the jackets and be great. I really don't like the US covers. I got this in an owl crate and this is the newest one for hollow pox. I just don't think that these are nearly as stunning as the UK ones. So I do not collect the US ones. I just got this one in an owl crate. Then we have the Keeper of the Lost Cities series. So this is the box set of it, which I have not yet opened. My cousins love this series. and I really do need to try it out because I've really heard nothing but great things. It is another middle grade book. And then I also have the one of the newer ones, which is Nightfall. I think I got this on Book Outlet, which is why I have like the whole thing. Down below on the shelf, we do have a Harry Potter bookend that I have again had for many years. Um, this is kind of one of the like, when the movie first came out, they had all this merch. So this was done in like 2000. Then we have The Rise of Kyoshi, The Shadow of Kyoshi, Romanov, Frostblood, Fireblood, and Nightblood. And then down below, we have one of my like original YA series that I read way back in high school. So that is the I Am Number Four series, which is a lot of fun, but really goes pretty far. <laughs> like it kind of never stops, very much like House of Night. And I loved it, but it got really complicated to keep up with. So maybe one day I'll dive back into the world because there were so many different um, lost files. So it took for, you had to, like, you needed a, a Wikipedia page to keep up in what order you needed to read things. So this is one of the collections, like the novellas, short stories of the I Am Number Four people. Then we have United as One. So this is going backwards um, because I Am Number Four is on the bottom. So this was the last book, I think. I don't even know at this point. United as One, <laughs> The Fate of Ten, The Fall of Five, The Revenge of Seven, The Rise of Nine, The Power of Six, and then this is the movie version of I Am Number Four. <laughs> so if did anyone ever watch that movie? I low-key kind of like it. I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I think it was terrible, but to be honest, it's a guilty pleasure. All right, we have now finished everything that is on these three shelves. So now we're going to turn around and talk about the favorite shelf. Okay, this is my favorite shelf. And I do have an in-depth tour of my Sarah J Moss books. I will go over them pretty briefly, 
but I, if you really want a lot more details about each edition that I have, I will link a video in the description and in the top for you guys to view. And I've also done a bit of rearranging to these shelves since I filmed that, so this will go through that as well. Okay, I've ended up having to split my Akatar books into two shelves. So this is the first of two. So obviously we have this nice spicy print of Reese and Feyre in the back. <laughs> I have my Court of Dreams pin of Feyre in her Starfall dress. A globe of Prithian and the entire world. More shelfies of Feyre and Reese, And a Starfall candle. Then we have A Court of Wings and Ruin Indigo Edition. A paperback version of A Court of Thorns and Roses. And like I said, if you want a more in-depth tour, which I go over which editions I have that are signed, what specific editions look like, I will link that in the top and below for you. Another original hardback of A Court of Thorns and Roses, A Court of Mist and Fury, A Court of Wings and Ruin, A Court of Frost and Starlight, an arc of A Court of Thorns and Roses that I found at a thrift store, the collector's edition of A Court of Thorns and Roses, the tour edition of A Court of Silver Flames, and then this really cool shelf thing by Rosie Thorns that does light up, which I don't think it is. Oh, there it goes. So it is of Starfall. On this shelf, we have, again, a whole nother set of Akatar, and all of these are the Illumicrate um, dust jackets. I am just missing, well, I have a Quarter Frost and Starlight's dust jacket, but I need some more copies of that book. <laughs> so that's the only thing that at the moment I don't have. So that is how I have them displayed on this shelf. And then we have this beautiful pin here of Feyre and Reese. And then my two copies of A Court of Silver Flames that are one's Barnes & Noble and one's Books A Million. And a candle of Cassian and Nesta. We have Embers of Memory, this misword candle. Shelfies of Dorian and Manon. A little toothless, which I like to pretend he's a Braxos. Then we just have the regular paperback U.S. editions. So Assassin's Blade, Throne of Glass, Crown of Midnight, Air of Fire, Queen of Shadows, Empire of Storms, Tower of Dawn, and Kingdom of Ash. In the middle, we have this edition of Queen of Shadows, which it just has a dust jacket from um, the bookish box on it. And then all of these are the exact same books, but with the bookish box um, dust art on them, dust jackets on them. If you are interested in seeing them, I will pop the video up there for you to watch because I go in an in-depth look of all of those books. On this side, we have a necklace of the Lord of the North, the collector's edition of Throne of Glass, a shelfie of Aelin, a shelfie of Rowan, this print of the entire gang, a candle of Aelin and Rowan, and then these are the UK editions of the series. I only have several of them, not the whole thing. And then this hidden box that has Terracin on one side and the Night Court on the other. And then these are the UK. So Tower of Dawn, Air of Fire, Crown of Midnight, and Throne of Glass. Over on this side, we have my second shelf of the Throne of Glass series. So we have the Nerdy Ink Dust Jackets. And again, if you want to see in depth, I've got that video up. And then in the middle, we have the Barnes & Noble editions of Kingdom of Ash. I have several of them so that I could make it look like this. <laughs> I love this art by Charlie Bowater. It's some of my favorite. And then at the end, we have the Assassin's Blade, which was a bookish box dust jacket. And I just really, really liked it. I thought it was super cool. We have the original cover of Throne of Glass, which... I'm so glad they changed, but it's pretty cool to have this in my collection. And then now up top, we have all of my Crescent City um, art and books and merch currently. We have the Obsidian Salt Glass. And it's kind of, it's candle wax, which is pretty cool, but I like it in that. I never will use that. And then we have this little mug that has um, Bryce on it. And I keep special bookmarks in there. We have two candles, a Light It Up Bitch and Light It Up Asshole. Um, I have a Light It Up embroidery hoop that I got off of Etsy and some different prints up here of Bryce and Hunt and the um, cover art that you got as a pre-order. And then we have the Waterstones edition of House of Earth and Blood. And this is a Polish edition, I think, that's in blue, which is really pretty. And then we have the Tour edition and the Barnes & Noble and Waterstones and the German edition. 
So we've got the full gambit up here. All right, now is when things are gonna get complicated. So I'll probably be bringing these things down, but this is my Jennifer L. Armentrout shelf up here. But I have this lovely picture of Hawk that I love. We have Every Last Breath, Stone Cold Touch, White Hot Kiss, Obsidian, Origin, the Lux Collection. So this includes Opal and Origin. Then we have Lux Beginnings. I have these hidden behind some because I don't really have room for them, but it's a Crown of Gilded Bones in the paperback edition from Blood and Ash in the paperback, The Darkest Star, and The Burning Shadow. Up next, we have the Fairy Loot editions of From Blood and Ash, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and The Crown of Gilded Bones. Then we just have the paperback copy of A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire behind those. And then we have the bookish box versions of the same exact book. So this is the Crown of Gilded Bones, A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire, and From Blood and Ash. I think these covers are stunning. Then I also have these pens that are by Salty, so it's a poppy, and then I have, and then we have Hawk. The next shelf is close to the ceiling, so I obviously can't reach that, um, but it's my J. Kristoff shelf. First off, we have this little weird Funko thing that's not Funko, but it is from Illumicrate, and it's of Mia. Then we have this little trick shelfie and then we have his newest book which is empire of the vampire and that is the waterstones edition and then we have the stunning edition from Illumicrate, which is again the same book just in white with these glorious edges and then my third edition of it which is the barnes and noble edition i don't love the cover as much but it has a lot of art throughout the entire thing so i'm excited to finish that book and read or see all the art. Moving along, we have the Illumicrate edition of Dark Dawn, which has yellow edges. I have these two little shelf uh, bookends of Mia and Mr. Kindly. Then we have True Life, Deviate, and Lifelike. And then I also have this shelfie of Mia. Up next is a series by him that I have not read, which is the Storm Dancer, the Lotus War books, Kinslayer, and Ensinger. All right, so I have a lot of editions of Dark Dawn. But this one, I believe, is the Waterstones edition. Then we have this gorgeous one from Goldsboro. And it has stars on the edges. Then we have God's Grave, which these are the UK covers. And this was a reprint that Illumicrate was able to get done because these original covers are way out of, like, you, they're out of print. So Illumicrate was able to get them to reprint them for a box. And then we have Nevernight, which these covers are just ridiculously pretty. I love them. I have the Australian version of Like Flight, which I really think that's a cool cover. And then lastly, we have my Shadow Hunter shelf. So the only decor that I really have on the shelf is this uh, trifold little um, picture thing that has all of the Infernal Devices people on them. And then I have these little shelfies from Illumicrate that is also Tessa, Will, and Jim from the Infernal Devices. And Church. We have this boxed set of the Infernal Devices. Pretty sure these were done by Illumicrate. Pretty positive. So we have Clockwork Princess, Clockwork Prince, and Clockwork Angel. This is my favorite of all of the Shadow Hunter series. We also have the original um, paperback versions of the Infernal Devices, which I think are just really cool. I, like, I love the spines. Then we have the Dark Artifices, which Lady Midnight and Lord of Shadows. The last book we have is the Queen of Air and Darkness from the um, Dark Artifices series, which I turned it inside out. This art was on the other side. I just really like this art. From her new series, we have Chain of Gold, which this is the Illumicrate edition. It has these really pretty orange edges. And then on the back, it has like the synopsis. And again, the Illumicrate edition of Chain of Iron. And these are the last hours is this series. And then of course, we have the original series that started it all, which ironically, I don't even have book one anymore because I hated the first three so bad that I got rid of them. <laughs> so I don't have City of Bones, but I have City of Ashes. And I did a reread of, I like went back into the Shadow World uh, hard last year. And I do, I hate, I really don't like the first three books. I don't like the plot that where it goes with Jason Clary. But books four through six are great. <laughs> 
So anyway, I have City of Ashes, City of Glass, City of Fallen Angels, City of Lost Souls, City of Heavenly Fire, Ghost of the Shadow Market, Tales from the Shadow Hunter Academy, last book on the shelf, The Lost Book of the White. <laughs> and that, my friends, is every book I have at the moment. Well, guys, you have reached the end. If you made it all this way, you are the real MVP here. Thank you so much for joining me and following along as I showed you every single book on all of these shelves. I feel like it's probably very long and intense, so I appreciate you guys being here so much. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next one.